Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1236. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how sales are at the lowest level in the last quarter century. Yes, for 25 years, home sales have not been so low. There are fewer home sales happening now than we've seen in a very long time. Builders are building new homes like crazy to try to make up for the lack of homes that are for sale. But many people that have low interest rates don't want to sell their home and give up their low interest rate. Or if they have a home worth between half a million to a million, some of those people are selling and paying all cash for a home half the value. But I think it goes beyond just an interest rate issue. I know that over the last few years, I've been reporting that BlackRock has bought many more homes than they have in the past. I think also the trend of Airbnb has made many people invest in second, third, fourth, fifth homes in order to rent them out. And so being in the home rental business has now become an American pastime. But I'm going to share with you this article because it goes through some of the statistics that are really, really interesting. And from what I hear, it's been very difficult in real estate circles because realtors aren't able to make a living in some cases. Depending on your market, of course, all markets are different, but it has gotten rather dire out there for people who earn a living by selling homes. So this article says that sales of previously owned homes dropped 2.2% in July from June to a seasonally adjusted annualized rate of 4.07 million units, according to the National Association of Realtors. Sales were 16.6% lower compared with July of last year. Homes sold at the slowest July pace since 2010. This count is for closings. So contracts were likely signed in May and June when mortgage rates went from around 6.5% to well over 7%. And sales fell month to month in all regions except the West, where they rose 2.7%. And sales dropped the most in the Northeast, down 5.9%. The National Association of Realtors is blaming higher rates and still tight supply for the decrease. There were 1.11 million homes for sale at the end of July, 14.6% fewer than July 2022, and the lowest level since 1999. There are now half as many homes for sale as there were pre-COVID. At the current sales pace, that represents a 3.3-month supply. A six-month supply is considered balanced between buyer and seller. Short supply continues to push both competition and prices higher. The median price of a home sold in July was $406,700, an increase of 1.9% from July of last year. Lawrence Yun, chief economist for the National Association of Realtors, said the West is the most expensive region, but it's also the region that experienced some price decline. Prices in July rose in all regions year over year, except in the West, where they were flat. And roughly three quarters of the homes that were sold were on the market for less than a month, indicating still strong demand, and about 30% sold above list price. Daniel Hale, chief economist at Realtor.com, said, Home shoppers have seen the number of options dwindle as homeowners are largely content to stay put and enjoy their current home, especially those with a low mortgage rate. Sales fell across all price categories, but they dropped the least in the highest price category, homes over $1 million. That's because there's much more supply on the high end, while the low end of the market is leanest. Buyers continue to use cash to gain a competitive advantage. All cash sales made up 26% of transactions, the same as June, but up from 24% in July of 2022. Investors who tend to use cash most bought 16% of homes in July. It marked a decrease from 18% in June, but was up from 14% in July 2022. First-time buyers appear to be gaining steam again. 
The realtors reported 30% of sales going to these buyers, up from 27% in June. And demand for Federal Housing Administration loans is also increasing. These loans, which offer low down payments, are favored by first-time buyers. Lisa Sturdivant, chief economist at Bright MLS, said the housing market is at a pivotal point as we head into fall, noting higher mortgage rates in particular. The decision between renting and buying will tip in favor of renting for some consumers, particularly in markets where rents are falling and new apartments are coming online. End of article. Well, I think right now we're seeing this because we are somewhere around near the top of the interest rate cycle. We may get one more increase of 25 basis points by the Fed, but most of the futures contracts are saying that we're not going to get any more hikes. So if the contracts are right, and they usually are, then perhaps all the hikes are behind us. And if that's true, and inflation continues on its downward trend, and right now it's just over 3%, if it gets close to the 2% that the Fed is shooting for, its target, then they'll be able to take a pause. And rates should decrease as there's a relief rally and people realize there aren't any more hikes coming. But I also believe that when you look at the Fed in the past, hiking rates quickly, what has happened historically is the Fed has hiked interest rates too much, too quickly, and usually has to start decreasing because the economy does start to slow too much. Now, we haven't seen a whole lot of slowing yet, but we do know that consumers are racked with debt. They are maxed out in terms of credit cards or they don't have much emergency savings in general. So there are a lot of warning signs out there that the consumer is pretty much tired and the consumer makes up the vast majority of the economy, roughly 70%. So Should interest rates start to decline, I think it's going to set off a huge boom in housing. And I do think we're going to have a two or three year period where housing prices just go up like crazy. I think we're gonna have a blow off top in real estate. Once we see lower rates, everyone's gonna be out trying to lock in those low rates. That frenzy is going to start because people are going to be locking in lower interest rates and excited to do so. And People who have been waiting for lower rates are going to jump into the market. People that have been waiting to sell are going to sell because prices are jumping again. And there's so much more demand than supply right now, it's still completely out of balance. And that's what's going to drive prices so much higher for a speculative bubble peak. So I do think we have two to three years of that and then probably a precipitous decline after that. But for all the people who say the decline is now, I disagree. You can't have a market crash when you have no inventory. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And all of my podcasts are in my wealth mentoring library on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. And while you're there, sign up for my weekly newsletter for more wealth tips. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.